Hello, welcome to Orphan Espresso. I'm Doug. I'm Barb. And this is a new Olympia Cremina. Brand new out of the box. Pretty sparkly, that's for sure. They are. Uh, I hate to even get close to them, they're so shiny. Um, Olympia doesn't give a lot of information about maintenance of the machine. I think they view it as essentially maintenance free. Inside the case, it's definitely maintenance free. Your main maintenance issue on the machine is maintaining the group. Uh, the uh, which means an occasional uh, cleaning uh, inside the screen, checking to make sure it's not plugged with coffee, depending on how you how you use the machine, how you dose, and uh, uh, making sure that the piston seals are lubricated properly. I find that the simplest way to maintain the group is to remove the group from the machine. Uh, it's a bit clumsy. You can theoretically lay the machine on its back and access the, the, the group in this manner, but it's quite clumsy. Not only are you in danger of dropping something onto your chrome faceplate, but it, it's clumsy. You need some special short-handled tools and it's, it's a lot simpler to just to take the group off. Um, it's designed to be removed, has four bolts, they are their hex head cap bolts. Uh, and now there's a matter of tools to take the group off. Um, this is a regular, this is a five millimeter hex key. Uh, I have, this is a standard five millimeter hex key. You notice that I have shortened this for a better fit. Okay, uh, if you want to use this type of tool, you do need to shorten it or either get one from us that, that we have shortened. Now, this end, what was this called again, Barb? A ball driver. A ball driver. As you see, this end of the hex has, has a ball shape on it. Um, these come there, I can see it. Can you see it there? Yeah. Uh, these come in, in generally, this is, a, this is a metric set of uh, ball driver hex keys. Uh, this is more convenient to use because it can uh, go in at an angle than the regular hex key. Now, if what you have is the standard hex key, you come in here with the shortened one and just turn it counterclockwise to, to loosen. I find that the best tool is one of these straight handled screwdriver style ball driver hexes. These are made by a, this company, Bondus. And uh, those come in a set. We've, we have some single five millimeters on order. Uh, with this one you have good control so you don't get in and, and hit the the, the side of the bell. You can very simply loosen these, reach in, take them off and set it aside. You do the top one, then you move over and you do this other bottom one. And you can maintain, you know, good control so you're not getting against the, getting against the bell and scratching it and just drop them down in there. That's the simplest thing to do. I dropped that one all the way down into the little finger hole. And once again, this type of tool is completely adequate. It makes it easier if you've shortened it. But you, as you see, you have quite a few turns that you do need to make before you get it loose enough. So th this is definitely the superior tool. But if what you have is, the, is a straight hex key, that's fine. I'm doing with this with the handle off. I hope you, you see the interchangeable of, interchangeability of tools. Now I'm supporting the group. The last one is the top one. And it just pulls straight off. As you see, this, this is reusable. Okay, pulled straight off. Now I can set the machine back and do my work very simply with no danger. Um, 
first way of, of uh, removing the screen is uh, uh, to remove this clip, to push out the pin, to loosen this nut, to loosen this nut, and to push down or to drive the screen off with a mallet. The, the, the tolerances of these parts on the top are very tight. To use a, uh, a, a tool in here, right, to use a, a snap ring plier um, in this field where you have absolutely no marks or mars, it's extremely possible you're going to make some scratches. Uh, and be fairly invasive. The, the alternative is to remove just the screen and the portafilter gasket that holds the screen in place. Now, this sounds like a lot more attractive proposition I would think to most people, but there's always a but. <laughs> this red, this is a high temperature silicone portafilter gasket and I wouldn't call it fragile but it doesn't like being poked and yes there is the possibility to tear this and I could just show you that I've have torn one removing it okay it's not as resilient as the old rubber style gaskets and so you have to be very careful. And um, the way this comes out is that you take a sharp probe and you poke it and you lift it and you break it. This is a real problem. And I, I, I have no way, I've already done it. I mean, it, I have no way to help in this issue because it you have to pull this out and you have to pull it off and I that's the second one I've broken it's I I believe you know and Barb concurs we both think that Olympia's idea on maintaining this machine is removal of the pin and the nuts and pushing the piston down. Because when you do it that way, both pieces come out quite intact right. and, and not difficult, but right. removing that clip and pin is a problem it, it, for I some it people. Is, it is a problem for some people, is that, you know, if you can get in here, perhaps with a plastic type screwdriver or plastic type tool and never scratch it, but when you enter in here with a, with a, a little pin or plier, you stand a pretty good chance of scratching this part up here, which might not be worth it to you. Um, the, the, the as I said, the these are the, the these are silicone. This is hard rubber. This is the old style portafilter gasket. You don't have these issues with the old style portafilter gasket. This is this is rated as the hardness of a shoe heel. And if, if you are going to, to commit yourself to removing the screen and the gasket by taking off this clip, pushing out the pin, disassembling the bushings, taking off the two nuts, and driving it out into, into your hand or driving it out onto the table, you're not going to have this tearing issue, but I, am, you know, I have found no way around this. As you see, I've done it twice. My first experience should have been a warning against my second one, but you saw what happened. All I had to do was poke it and it's gone. So, where does this leave us? This leaves us back to where we were. That's, this is the first problem. Now, as you see, now you have a clear field. You've, this, the screen, this just falls out. It's held in place with the portafilter gasket. Okay? It just slides right over the the top of it just like that comes in. Now, here's what you, what you have. You can now get in here and very simply you wipe out any old lubricant, any debris on the sides of it, just like that.
just wipe it around. You come in with some Dow 111, just a little bit, about that much, just a little finger's worth. Go to the over here and you wipe a, a film of it around the surface for your lubrication. Push the piston back down. And once it hits that, oh, it's nice and smooth. Once it hits that, and you can hear it, hear that the vacuum, mm -hmm. just amazing. Okay, now when you come down here on your final, make sure there's no extra. And basically, that's all there is to it on the on the cleaning and lubrication. Okay. And it, it travels, it, it pulls the lubricant up up to the top and actually lubricates both seals. Just like that. Now you then I'm gonna go ahead, since I'm gonna repeat this, I'm gonna go ahead and use one of the harder hard rubber seals just to demonstrate how much simpler it is than the silicone one. Alright, you can take this. And you push it down with your fingers so it clears the bell. Just like that. You can take either this tool, which actually works pretty well, to, to seat that. And you're just pushing it into the channel. You're just pushing it into the channel. Or you can use a screwdriver. Just push it back down into the channel. This rubber. As I said, it's been the portafilter gaskets have been made out of hard rubber for ages. Okay, once you have it pushed down into the channel, you use your portafilter as the final tool. Without the basket in there. No basket, yeah. And you take it, and that fully seats the the portafilter gasket. Okay. Um, then you just put the group back on and you're done. You put the group back on. The easiest way to do this is to take, as you saw the way I took it off, is to put one in here, take your tool, now if you have the and that basically will hold it in place. You don't tighten it up all the way. That'll hold it in place for you to to approach uh, all the rest of them. If you have, you get it started with your fingers. If you have this style, the the the, the classic hex. You're, you're going to have to do a, a lot more fumbling around than with one of those ball ends. But you go, you just kind of keep at it. Go around and around. If you have this style, these sets are available at most hardware stores for these ball ends. And you come in in this manner. And that's a five millimeter size. It's a five, it's a five millimeter. That's why I like this one. And you just tighten across these two, and then you put in the the last two, and you're all set. You're clean and lubricated. But you do have this problem, and we don't we don't really have a good solution. And as I said, I'm always feel apologetic when when we haven't solved something to our satisfaction. Um, but let me just show you once again the difference and how simple it can be. I always leave one of the top ones on there. That way I can have control getting the group off and I'm not in danger of dropping it. Pulling out on the group as I take that out, see. And I just lift it away in that manner. Now, with this hard rubber, you use just the standard technique. Poke it 
lift up. You see that? And I'm not under the same <laughs> constraints of worrying about the fragility of that. All right. Now what you have, can you see that, Barb? That tiny mark that you've used, that you've poked it with, it has absolutely no effect on the seal. There it is. Now I can see it. Right. The little dot. That's just a little dot, and it has no effect on the seal. It doesn't degrade this thing at all, and it doesn't create a fissure to, to tear it. And so, you know, once again, it's very simply done. So basically, if you want to maintain it by, by doing it through the bottom, you need the hard rubber seal. You, you, if you, you want to pull the clip and the pin and push yeah. out through the top, then you can reuse yeah, the red you're seal. You're going to have continual problems any time you put any, any little poke or tear. I've tried, I've tried sliding along the side uh, and, and getting under it. I, I've tried sliding along the outside of that red gasket. And no matter what I do, I put a little weak spot in the in the gasket. And by I going go, through the bottom. By going through the bottom. Otherwise, to 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 avoid this problem, is that you have to remove this clip, push out the pin, lay the the yoke back, remove this with a 15 millimeter, remove the this the second nut with a 17 millimeter. Push either with a with a hammer. You have to knock the piston down, so it will push the, the this, both the basket and the portafilter. It will push it down using the piston as a tool. I think some people would find that changing over to the the, the heavy rubber part might be beneficial if you are going to maintain this on a monthly basis or something like this. So anyway, that's the maintenance method. It does have a it does does have its problem. We haven't overcome this particular problem except for a more invasive procedure which you might feel is not to your liking. I don't know what else to tell you right now, uh, but this one this group is clean. It's lubricated with the uh, Dow 111. Uh, you would probably do this every uh, two months or so uh, to keep the, the seals lasting as long as they can. Uh, that's and of course you clean the coffee screen before you put it back the in. Screen before you put it back in. That's maintenance of the group for the for the new Cremina. Uh, we're going to do a second video on changing the piston seals, and uh, uh, so I'm going to leave the group off right now, and we'll take up at this point when we come back.